Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate cumulative interest payments or and or cumulative principal payments. So this is something where maybe you have a loan or house loan and you want to calculate how much interest you're paying for a set time of month, maybe the end of uh, the year you want to calculate how much total interest you paid or how, many, how much principal you've paid toward the balance. And there's actually a function that does that and I'll show you two ways, one using the functions and the other one using a table. So let's say for example we have a loan at $100,000 and our rate is uh, 3% and the term maybe for the loan is 30 years. So let's kind of figure out what the payment that we've got. We've got a payment and we can use the payment function here. This is the PMT function. It's going to ask for the rate and this is going to rate, this is a yearly rate so we're going to have to divide it by 12 to get the monthly rate uh, for the calculation. And this is our period so we're going to have this period of 30 years, but there's 12 months into a year, so we're going to have to multiply that by 12. And our present value is this amount, and our future value is going to be uh, zero, right? So we're going to go ahead, oh, and then we have our type. Let me go ahead and type. Uh, zero is the end of the period, uh, one is the beginning of the period. If you don't enter anything, this is a, um, if you notice it's in brackets, that means they're, they're optional um, arguments that you can put in there. If you don't put in there, it's going to put in the default, which uh, I believe in this case is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that and it's zero. So we're going to have our payment of 421.60. Uh, so what that means is every month we're going to have to pay $421.60 uh, for 30 years to pay off this $100,000 loan at 3%. Now, let's say for the first year we want to find out uh, what is the principal and what is interest that we're paying into it. So what we can do is use uh, the function here, cumulative or Q U M prince, and that's going to tell us well, how much principal we're paying for that particular. Um, maybe we're we're going to use the example of the first 12 months. So we have to do our rate here again. We do our rate. That's going to be that uh, divided by 12. And next is our number of periods, which is this the the term times 12, which is 12 months in a year. Uh, the present value is $100,000. I'm going to select that. And then the start period. Now this is going to be the start period of months. So we're going to put the first month and then the end period is the last month, number 12. And the type, we're going to select, go ahead and select the end of the period. Go ahead and close that. And then that is how much principal that we're going to be paying at the end of uh, the 12 months. Now the interest is going to be the same, these these are going to be the same terms here, so I'm going to go ahead and just make it easy and just kind of copy that, control C to copy, press escape, and then go ahead and go in here, and then type cumulative interest, and go ahead and just paste that in there, because they're going to be the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and do B2, which is my rate here, uh, times uh, divided by 12, B3, which is my term, uh, times 12, times months. Uh, B1, which is my loan amount. Um, starting period 1, ending period 12. And this is the type is, it's going to occur at the end of the period. So I'll go ahead and close that parentheses, press enter. And now you notice that the cumulative interest is 297145. Now this is kind of something that you can change if you want to find out what's going to, what's going to happen in the second year. Of course, you just put 13 here and then 24 here, right? and do the same thing for uh, that uh, the cumulative interest if you want to find out the cumulative interest in principle or if you want to extend it longer maybe one to five years you would do one here five years there's going to be sixty months in five years and so you'd put sixty here right so that will kind of tell you that but what if you wanted to see a little bit more um, visual view of it in the table and you want to kind of do a little bit more it'd be a little more intuitive well we can do it with a table here and we have to kind of create an amortization table and turn it into a table and use some of the calculation features there so let me go ahead and show you how to do it with a table so we'll, we have a table here so let me go ahead and delete this I, I've done it earlier so I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, control shift down arrow to select that range uh, control minus sign to delete those particular rows. So what I want to do here is I have my first payment number zero. Basically this is my starting balance of $100,000. I just equal it to the small table up here. So the next one I'm going to do is one. Uh, that's the second payment. Uh, the new balance, this is going to equal the previous balance right here. So as I, when I copy the cells down, it's going to always refer to the previous balance uh, of the upper row. Now the interest payment, that's going to equal 
uh, this, this new balance, and I'm going to multiply it by the rate uh, divided by 12. I'm going to put that in parentheses. All right? This will be in parentheses. Okay? So that's going to be my interest payment. And my principal basically is going to be that payment. That's going to be the monthly payment is always going to stay the same, 428.6, and it's going to minus the interest. So that's going to be equals uh, that amount. And not to put that in absolute cell reference because when I copy it down, it's always going to refer to cell B4 minus. Uh, that. Right? Oh, I forgot one thing. This, the interest payment here, this should always also refer to um, an absolute, this should also be a cell reference, uh, absolute cell reference, because, let me go ahead and scroll up here, because we're referring to this table up here, and that's going to be a little bit static. When we copy formulas down, we want to make sure that that B2 cell is static. So they're, they're going to be dollar signs in front of the B and the 2 here. Let me go ahead and press F4. And we've got the dollar signs in front of the press enter, right? Also, I wanted to make sure that the formatting is the same. Right now, these are all formatted for currency uh, with the two decimal places, and this one is not. This is general. So what I want to do, I can go ahead and do it up here. But what it, the easier thing for me to do is just select one of the cells that have currency or the format already set up. Right click and click the format painter, and just kind of hover and just click in the cell here and it's going to apply that. So after that's done, what I want to do is uh, the balance here. So this is going to equal the, this new balance here minus just the principal paid. Go ahead and click on that, press enter, and then we have our uh, remaining balance at the end of that particular payment number or period. So I have 30 years here, so that's going to be equal to 360 months, 30 times 12, 12 months in a year. So I'm going to go ahead and just select these two um, cells here. I'm going to go ahead and hover down or, or drag the fill handle down here. Let me go ahead and just test it out and make sure it works out. Let me go ahead and do it for the 12 monthly payments. Let me select these cells here, B12 to E12. And what I can do now is I'll just go ahead and double click the fill handle and it's going to copy the formulas down to um, the 12th payment down here. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and it copied it down. Now my cumulative principal is 2087.80. Let me go ahead and just kind of select that and see if it matches. So the sum here says 2087.80 and then the interest is 2971.45. 297.145. Let me go and select this and we have 297145. So that is correct. So what I'm going to do now is let me go ahead and just kind of select uh, these two and go up to 360. I mean, there's other ways that we can do this to have it go ahead and go up to 360, but I'm just going to go ahead and brute force this by just uh, dragging the fill handle down here just to 360, just to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, this is not that bad to do it. We only have 360 uh, cells here. So let me go ahead and select it. It drew down the numbers. Excel drew down the numbers to 360. Let me go ahead and go back up. I can go ahead and just press control period. Since I've selected the cell, press control period, it'll go to uh, the top uh, portion of this particular selection. So I'm up over there. I'm going to go ahead and select these cells now. So these got these have the formula functions. I don't need to select more because these have the formula functions. I'll go ahead and just double click the fill handle here and it's going to copy it all the way down. So if I press uh, control N to get to the bottom here, that should be the last payment at zero. Let me go ahead and press control home to go to the very top of the cell here. So I've got that set up right now. And now I'm going to turn this into a table. I'm going to use the table feature in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of select here. And uh, I, think, I think the best thing I can do is just probably select the whole range of cells. Control, shift, down arrow. And just press control T. Or you can go and insert here. Under the Insert tab, you can insert a table. But I like to use the keyboard shortcuts. You can see that if I hover it over it long enough, it's going to tell me the keyboard shortcut is Control T. Press Control T, and it's going to ask me um, where my range is, the selection that I did. Does my table have headers? Yes, it does I have headers here at the top here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now the table feature has been turned on for that range. And what I want to do now is have a total row. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. We uh, Once the table is created. We have this table tools contextual menu under design. I'm going to go ahead and select total row. So the total row is down at the bottom. This total row doesn't really make sense because we don't really need this. We're not totaling the balance. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Click on the drop down and, and select none. The total rows that are important for me right now are these two, the interest and principal. So I'm going to select interest here and have that sum and also the principal here and have that sum. 
right? So this kind of works out nicely. The principal that I've paid is $100,000 for the whole 30-year loan. Uh, for the whole interest, the interest that I paid is $51,000 for the 30-year loan. Now, if I wanted to figure out the interest or principal for set periods, like the first 12 months, I have these filters here right now. So what I can do is under payment number, I want to select maybe number filters from 1 to 12. So th this is going to be between. So the first one is going to be 1. The second one is going to be 12. Click OK. And now let me go ahead and just scroll up here. And maybe make this a little bit smaller. All right. So I'm going to look at this. My interest is 297145, which matches here, 297145. And the principal is 208780, which matches that one here. So the nice thing about a table here is now you can have the selection here is a little bit easier. Maybe I want to look at what the interest and principals paid are for the first uh, first five first five years. So that's going to be between month one and month 60. There are 60 months in five years. So I click OK, and if I scroll to the bottom here, let me go ahead and just press uh, Control Down Arrow. You'll notice now that I would know my interest is $14,000, a little over $14,000. And the principal that I've paid into it is a little over $11,000. Let me go ahead and go back up here, control home to go back up to the top here. So this is how we can get the cumulative interest and cumulative principal on a loan. I've shown two examples, one using the functions that are in Excel, and the other one using a creating a table here and using the table feature to figure it out. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.